Hello folks. It's another wonderful Sunday afternoon here in Ontario. And folks, today I hope to take you back to our shooting range and sight in our CIL Model 171 that we did all the work in our last video on, our treasure here. But unfortunately, the weather's not cooperating. There's a pretty stiff northwest breeze out there. It's snowing and it's pretty cold. It's actually a really nice afternoon to spend in the nice wearing workshop here. So instead of shooting today, we're going to put this sling on little Betsy the 22. So the first step is let's take that barrel action back off the stock and put the stock in the vise. Here's the bolt. There's the mag. Now we've got a couple of screws to take out. There we go. Let's put this in the vise. Wow! As I look outside, the wind's just whipping the snow across the fields. So I'm going to put this stock in this old 9-inch record woodworking vise. This vise was made in England, and it just happens to have been my father's. I've got two pieces of 1-inch pine for soft jaws, and I've also got a towel that you can see here to protect the stock. That's pretty good. Now. Before we do any of this stuff, I'm going to put some masking tape on there just to protect it while we drill the holes and make some marks. Now, if memory serves me correctly, the swivel stud should be about two to two and a half inches up from the base of the butt. So we'll go up. Yeah, I think two inches looks just fine on this. I'm going to put a dimple with a center punch. This is one of those things, measure twice, cut once. I always want to make sure we're in the right place. Let's say we're pretty close there. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to use a pilot cutter. It cuts a hole of the diameter of the shank of this stud and has a nice flat spot for the top of the stud to screw into. I hope to make that out of this broken 3 8 drill. It matches the diameter of the top of the stud. So time to head off to the grinder and see what we can rustle up out of this old drill. So my goal is to grind that drill down so that it fits this stud where the shank is right here, nice and square, so it gives a firm grip on the stud. I'm going to turn it <laughs> with a drill, and hold it against the grinder, and when we get close to size, I'll measure the diameter of the shank of the screw and we'll match it to that. Off we go. It's important we make the diameter of this pilot cutter the right size. If it cuts too large a pilot hole, why the threads will just be loose in the stock and it won't be very good. And if we make it too tight, well, when that screw goes in, it'll put a lot of pressure on that stock, and it may even crack the stock. And let me tell you a story. When I was a boy, I saved up my money, and I went to Canadian Tire, and I bought a set of swivels. Now, they weren't studs like this, quick disconnect. They were just a flat-headed, slot-type wood screw that went into the stock. And my father told me, you should drill pilot holes, son. Just wait. I'll help you do that. Well, being a teenager, and of course, father doesn't know best, nobody's smarter than a 16 year old. I went downstairs, put the gun in the vise, used the soft jaws, and proceeded to use a center punch, lay it all out, and I didn't drill a pilot hole. I drilled the screw in tight, 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 and broke a piece off the heel of the stock. I glued it back on and my father helped me after that, but talk about a valuable lesson. It was a rich learning opportunity. So we're going to make sure that this pilot cutter we're making here works well. So when I measure the shank of this screw, oh, it's about 161, 162. And I've roughed this on the rough grinder there. And right now the diameter of this pilot cutter is about, oh, 170. I think we better go over to our fine grinding stone and finish it. Albeit it's far from perfect, 
I think it might work just fine. However, I'm not seeking another rich opportunity with that stock over there, so I'm going to try it in a scrap piece of wood first. I tried it three different places on this piece of scrap cherry, and it seemed to work just fine. Time to drill a hole in the stock. <laughs> Don't you hate doing this? Time to remove the tape and let's screw in the stud. I'm going to put a dribble of dish soap on it to lubricate it and they do go in pretty tight. There's a lot of friction on those threads. Put a sling swivel on it. There we go. Isn't that awesome? Now that we've got the butt end done, let's take it out, turn it around, and do the fore end. Let's rinse and repeat. The fore end swivel should be about an inch and a half from the end. Let's put a little dish soap on there again like the other one. There we go. Both swivel studs are installed. All we need to do now is put the strap on. Let's move over to the workbench and do that. Let's put the strap on those swivels. And just so there's no danger of us marking this stock, I'm going to pop them back off. Maybe we'll put the rifle together now. <laughs> there we go, little Betsy with a sling. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have a lot of fun with this 22. It's hard to imagine. It was probably close to 45 years ago that I broke the stock on the old one and I cracked that piece by not drilling a pilot hole. And here we are once again today. Ah, I love it. Well, folks, maybe someday the weather will be nice, and I look forward to taking you out with me and shooting little Betsy back in our shooting range. I hope you've enjoyed today's video, folks. Thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again on Out of the House with Paul.